It's time for Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, inviting the atheist, agnostic, and skeptic to examine for themselves the evidence for the Christian faith. We are all limited by what we do not know and by the things we think we know but are not true. Dr. Joe Mott earned his Ph.D. at LSU and was a distinguished math professor at Florida State University for 38 years, helping to write three math textbooks and authoring over 30 research articles in math. He is now the host of this radio program, Defending and Commending the Faith. Here is Joe Mott. Hello to everyone. Welcome to the program. We have been discussing facts and fictions regarding the person of Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus is called the Greek title Christ, which is the interpretation of the Hebrew term Messiah. The most recent fictions about Jesus are that some people say fiction seven. Jesus is not the only way to heaven. And some people also say fiction eight, Jesus never claimed to be God. When we study the person of Jesus Christ and how he viewed himself, we are at the very center of Christian theology. One of the most controversial topics brought against Christianity is the topic of the deity of Christ. That topic lies at the heart of the Christian faith. We simply cannot allow that objection to prevail, for our faith rests on him actually being God incarnated in human flesh. He is not simply an extraordinary human being, albeit the most unusual person in history. Millard Erickson, in his book Introducing Christian Doctrine, observes, quotes, We should note that Jesus did not make an explicit and overt claim to deity, saying in so many words, I am God. What we do find, however, are claims which would be inappropriate if made by someone who is less than God, end quotes. On several occasions, Jesus made several comments and performed certain actions from which you and I can infer his deity. In the last episode, I said, quote, one of the best insights we have concerning what Jesus thought about his nature comes from the titles he accepted, in quotes. I discussed his favorite self-designation, the Son of Man. In some respects, the clearest indication of Jesus' self-understanding is found in connection with his trial before the Sanhedrin and the high priest Caiaphas. In responding to Caiaphas' question, Jesus identified himself with the Son of Man mentioned in Daniel 7, verses 13 and 14, and that caused the high priest to accuse Jesus of blasphemy, and consequently the Sanhedrin condemned him to death. Jesus' answer to the high priest is as clear an indication of Jesus' deity as can be found in the Gospels. The chief priest pressured the Roman prelate, Pontius Pilate, saying, Crucify him. Pilate told them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Pilate was refusing to take responsibility, but granted them the illegal right to execute Jesus. The Jews answered Pilate, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die because he made himself the Son of God. That's found in John chapter 19, verse 7. Not only did Jesus not dispute the charge that he claimed to be divine, but he also accepted the attribution of deity given to him by his disciples. Jesus said, Who do you say that I am? Peter responds, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. That's in Matthew 16, 
verse 16. When Thomas saw the place where the spear went into Jesus' side, and he touched the wounds on Jesus' hands and feet, he exclaims, My Lord and my God, as in John chapter 20, verse 28. Here was an excellent opportunity for Jesus to correct a misconception, but he did not do so. That means he agreed that attribution was no misconception. The Gospel of John is noted for its references to the deity of Jesus. Similarly, the book of Hebrews is most emphatic regarding Jesus' divinity. Around 60 A.D., the Apostle Paul wrote concerning the deity of Christ, quote, He is the image of the invisible God, for by him all things were created that are in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy or the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to reconcile all things to himself, by him whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross, end quotes. That is found in Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 to 20. No one in the Old Testament, not even the most godly of men, was referred to in this way. The early church knew that Jesus was no mere man, but the eternal Son of Man and the Son of God, the Lord of all creation. In episodes 27 to 32, I discuss Jesus' self-understanding. In particular, there I declare that Jesus accepted the title Son of God and Christ. In episodes 159 and 160, I discuss Jesus in terms of his uniqueness. You may find it beneficial to consult those episodes. In the deepest sense, Jesus was an incomparable person. No one ever spoke with such authority as he did, lived sinlessly as he did, died vicariously as he did, and rose from the grave as he did. That proves without a shadow of a doubt that God has vindicated Jesus' declarations about himself. In the Handbook of Christian Apologetics by Peter Kreeft and Ronald K. Tichelli, they say, quotes, Jesus kept pointing to himself, saying, come to me. But, on the contrary, Buddha said, look not to me, look to my doctrine. Buddha also said, be ye lamps unto yourselves. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Lao Tzu taught the way. Jesus said, I am the way. End quotes. That's found in John chapter 14, verse 6. Kraft and Tuchelli go on to say, first, the divinity of Christ is the most distinctly Christian doctrine of all. A Christian is most essentially defined as one who believes this. Second, the doctrine works like a skeleton key, unlocking all other doctrinal doors of Christianity. Christians believe each of their many doctrines not because they have reasoned their own way to them as conclusions of a theological inquiry 
or as results of some mystical experiences, but on the divine authority of the one who taught them, as recorded in the Bible and transmitted by the church, in quotes. In the book, Many Infallible Proofs, Volume 2, the historian and minister A.T. Pearson affirmed, Jesus stands absolutely alone in history, in teaching, in example, in character, an exception, a marvel. And he is himself the evidence of Christianity. He authenticates himself. The historian Will Durant, author of The Massive Story of Civilization, devoted an entire volume of 751 pages to the years surrounding the life of Christ, entitled Caesar and Christ. In it, Durant writes, quotes, the synoptic gospels agree remarkably well and form a consistent portrait of Christ. No one reading these scenes can doubt the reality of the figure behind them. That a few simple men should in one generation have invented so powerful and appealing a personality, so lofty an ethic and so inspiring a vision of human brotherhood would be a miracle far more incredible than any recorded in the Gospels. After two centuries of higher criticism, The outlines of the life, character, and teachings of Christ remain reasonably clear and constitute the most fascinating feature in the history of Western man, end quotes. In their book, Putting Jesus in His Place, The Case for the Deity of Christ, Robert Bowman, Jr. and J. Ed Komazuski present evidence for Jesus being God in five categories. Jesus gets God's honors. Jesus has God's attributes. Jesus has God's names. Jesus does God's deeds. And Jesus sits in God's seat. I will address two categories, namely his words and his deeds. Jesus was unequaled in his words. I got the idea of using the word unequaled from a discussion of Jesus in the book Evidence and Truth by Robert J. Morgan. Jesus expected people to honor him just as they honor the Father. That's in John chapter 5, verse 23. He encouraged them to believe in him as they did in God, in John chapter 14, verse 1. He pointed out the dramatic distinction between him and the thief, Satan, in John chapter 10, verse 10. Jesus declared, quotes, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath, end quotes. That's in Mark chapter 2 verses 27 and 28. Jesus was clearly claiming the right to redefine the status of the Sabbath, a right which belongs only to someone equal to God. Jesus said to the Jews, quotes, For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins, end quotes. That's in John chapter 8, verse 24 and 28. Quotes, before Abraham was, I am, end quotes. That's in John chapter 8, verse 58. Jesus was using the very same name that God used in speaking to Moses at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. You have to be very close-minded to deny that Jesus was claiming divinity. Allow me to close this episode by quoting a comment by Ravi Zacharias. I came to him because I did not know which way to turn. 
I remain with him because there is no other way I wish to turn. I came to him longing for something I did not have. I remain with him because I have something I will not trade. I came to him as a stranger. I remain with him in the most intimate of friendships. I came to him unsure about the future. I remain with him certain about my destiny. Thank you for listening to Defending and Commending the Faith with Joe Mott, a production of Wave 94 Radio in Tallahassee, Florida. If you have any questions or comments for Joe, please forward them to Doug Apple at Wave 94 at this email address, dougapple at wave94.com. And be sure to join us every Monday evening at 6.45 p.m. on Wave 94 and subscribe through your favorite podcast app, Defending and Commending the Faith, with Joe Mott.